right, live stream is running. So um, I'm just going to be um, working on uh, my Minecraft from scratch in Unity 3D. Um, I've been working on this for uh, off and on for a, over a year. Um, but recently, in the last uh, couple of weeks, maybe two months, um, I picked the project back up again and started playing with it. Um, anyway, today I'm working on the world generator settings because I uh, I'm not crazy happy about the world terrain at the moment. You can see there's a lot of weirdness going on. Um, I've got an issue here where this is supposed to be an ore um, or diorite maybe and it's yeah the texture is not working so I got to get in there and fix that and then just overall I was looking to see you know like what is the world terrain gen looking like and do I need to tweak that any further um, so that's kind of what I'm just goofing around with today I kind of want to go down here because it looks like the terrain gets a little more interesting down here on the southern portion of this island. Just going to grab my player and move him over there. So this should kick off a bunch of world gen. Um, And, uh, it, one of the things I struggled with quite a lot was not maxing out the uh, computer when it came to generating the world. Um, it was actually quite difficult not to drop frames when I start generating chunks. So I'm just going to let the world generate in for a little while here.
And the I've got the terrain generation, um, the render size for the world cranked up really, really high, just so I can get kind of a nice overview of what the terrain looks like. Like, I, I could turn this down to, like, 8 is probably a more playable, um, like, field, you know, like, render distance. Um, there's a lot less lag spikes. So, one of the difficult things about doing terrain generation is trying to get a good balance between land and ocean. Um, like on this world, uh, my player is currently at um, X786 because at X0 it's just a big ocean and there's nothing, nothing to see, um, which isn't very exciting. So what I can do, like you can see how the the terrain is really kind of jagged um, and the rivers are kind of small, but what I can do is I can effectively stretch the world vertically and horizontally to make uh, the hills smoother. Um, it also makes the continents larger, but it also makes the oceans larger. Um, so yeah, one of the things I struggle with is how to get the, a good balance of ocean to land to terrain features. Um, like you can see these these are uh, coming out of the this like spike here. This is actually supposed to be a, a small bit of mountain, and if I were to stretch this land out, it would look a lot more natural. Especially like these over here. The reason these look so out of place is because I've got the world really compressed right now, so that I can get a better idea of what terrain generation looks like. I'll see if I can. Um, like stretch this and then get back to this kind of same peninsula here. Um, I'll do that real quick. So let me go ahead and stop the game and shut down the server. Um, I'll delete the current world chunks which are all in here. So delete those. And then we'll go into um, the library that does the terrain generation. Um, so this value here called magical seed factor, this is what I actually use to stretch on the X and Z axis. Um, so if I make this number smaller, the terrain will be more stretched out. So we'll just go ahead and drop this down a bit and then we'll see if we can get back to where we were. Start up the server, and then back to the game. Now, my player was previously at 700x and roughly zero on Z, so I'm gonna try like a thousand X and see how close that gets us. Oops. So we'll go ahead and start there. for the world to generate in. Yeah, ocean. I'll just have to wait for the world to generate in. Um, I'll go ahead and turn up the render distance.
Yeah, you can see I've still got some work to do here. Uh, these aren't getting any better. It's okay. Um, you see our peninsula is a little larger now. features I can goof around with is the um, like the percentage of mountains so I can uh, let me shut down the server and delete the world chunks and the player starting position will make that 900 um, so in here um, in our train generator settings We've got um, mountains amount, so I can change this down to have more, to have fewer mountains and up to have more. So we'll go ahead and see what that looks like with more mountains. Start our server. Yeah, terrain generation is kind of a mess. Well, the mountains. There, I don't know why there are gaps in the in the mountains. Like the, this gap right here. Like there's three or four block gap in between uh, the blocks. That shouldn't happen. I don't know why it does. I can look at that. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can fix that, find out what that bug is. figure out why there's no sound. Yeah, I'm sorry I've got family in the house with me, so they'll be kind of noisy. 
Sometimes I also just mute the microphone. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the code and figure out what's going on with my mountains. All right, so here's where I make a determination on um, whether it should be mountain terrain. So I'm, there must be a bug in here somewhere where I only do the first couple of blocks of mountain, and then for some reason it's just air, and then it turns back into terrain. So I, I'm going to stare at this for a minute and see if I can figure it out. You know what? Actually, I bet it's caves. Um, I bet those holes are caves. So uh, the way the caves work is um, I cut holes in the um, in stone, basically. So if uh, if I'm underneath the terrain Y limit and I see that it's stone, then I know that I can start cutting out some caves. And I bet that's what that gap is. I bet I'm cutting out caves. Let me, um, instead of trying to fix that, let me turn up the mountains amount and see what that looks like. So I'm going to set mountains to like 0.85. Um, that should generate a lot of mountains. We'll see what that looks like. server running. Whoops. Try that again. All right, server's running. Um, let me blow away the current world and we'll start the game and we should generate a ton of mountains now. And we'll see if there if there's weird gaps in it, or if it's just cave systems. Yikes. Uh, what a mess. Okay. So I definitely think that these gaps in the mountains are um, caves. So let me just change the cave generation to say only if y is less than um, I don't know 60 um, then generate caves and we'll see if that cleans up our mountains any Not the 
the server, delete these chunks. into where we're generating the caves and I have a cave breakthrough limit let me see what that's set to 45 so I'm gonna change that to 60 actually that's not what that does. Train Y minus 5. So I'm going to do train Y minus 20. All right, starter server. The server is a, a web server. Oh, hello, Gusta. Um, Sorry, no worries about uh, poor English. I'm American and I have poor English, so everyone's forgiven. Yeah, definitely fix the holes in our mountains. Although our mountains are just hideous. <laughs> they really are quite ugly. Yeah, like this. This little mountain right here. I really need to stretch these out and make them larger. Um, actually, I can eliminate a lot of these smaller uh, protrusions of mountains by just turning down the amount of mountains that we generate. So I'm going to turn it back down and see if it looks any better now. So um, I'll delete the chunks that we've already generated, so we generate new ones. Uh, shut down the server. settings will turn mountains amount down to 0.15 and so here's our server running um, the server is a dotnet core um, um, REST API. It's nothing spectacular. Right now when the game wants a chunk, um, it just sends a get request for that world, that chunk. And the server will return 404 if it hasn't generated that chunk, which is an indication to the game client that you'll have to ask again later, this chunk isn't ready. and then. Um, a while later, the game will ask again for the chunk, and it will receive the data. So you can see if I just kind of see if I can pause this. So you can see here, like, the game is asking for a chunk, and the server is saying 404 not found. And then a little later, you know, the game will ask for the chunk again, and... Hopefully by then the server has generated the chunk and it will respond with a 200 and the it'll send the chunk data along. So here's our same world again. Um, turn the mountains way down. Um, at some point I'm going to have to implement um, some smoothing to build up some hills around these mountains. Um, 
could work on that. Um, I like the um, the water features though. Um, getting, let's see if I can get a nice overhead view. Getting rivers and oceans was difficult. Um, and in, I ended up cheating. I used, um, for my world generation, I actually stole um, the, let me see if I can find it. I don't recall exactly what it was called, Sharp Noise. So there's a repository on GitHub um, called Sharp Noise. So this is what I'm using for my world generation. Um, in their examples, there is a complex planet. Um, so I basically took this generator um, and I use it and I, I adapted it to work for my Minecraft implementation. But yeah, basically all of this code is still the same as far as generating oceans, generating rivers, and the like so um, it was it was an exercise getting it um, implemented um, to work with my my implementation of Minecraft um, because it it really just kind of returns a terrain map a height map um, so it was up to me to say okay well this is a beach and this is you know like plains and these are what mountains look like so that was fun so I'm going to turn up the um, render distance what happened why aren't we generating chunks anymore oh I paused the server earlier that's why there were no chunks coming in I didn't know I could do that. I bet that made the game client unhappy. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. So I'll go ahead and um, restart the server and client so that we can get the rest of the um, chunks generated in. Server is running. You could see that the chunks that had already been generated and loaded pretty quickly because they were just saved on disk. These other chunks are being generated in real time. And uh, as far as load, on the CPU, it's it's multi-threaded very well. I'd like to say um, so. Uh, chunk generation doesn't interfere with gameplay too much. I don't have a frame counter on, but the amount of frame skips are minimal. Um, it probably doesn't come through a YouTube stream too well, but yeah, it's not it's not choppy at all. so I can see where I'm at. There we go. I'm just going to do some um, world generation for a little bit to see what it looks like. I can almost stretch the terrain in the X and Z access even a little bit more um, like these little water features here would actually turn into lakes um, and this this river along here um, not this one but this one would actually become more pronounced you can see how it's it's not really well defined as a river right now 
Um, but if we stretch the world a little bit more, it'll become a, um, a, a more realistic looking river. So I'm going to go ahead and do another stretch on the X and Z axis um, to build out the train a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to set my starting position for my player at 1500 since I'm stretching the world and I kind of want to end up in the same place. Um, stop my server, delete the current world so we don't get chunk borders, and then I'm going to hop into my code and it was this value at the top here that I used to stretch the world. I'm just going to rename this one. I've got it. Um, world stretch. And so by making the X and Z values that I feed to the world generator smaller, I effectively stretch the world out to make all of the features larger. So I'm going to change this to a point 0.1, which should have a pretty drastic effect. That was a world, yeah, world stretch. Um, so let's go ahead and rebuild the code and see what that does to the world. Get my server started. sure if I overshot or undershot my mark. Ah, there's the world right over there. Cool. See um, over here is my water. I actually ran out. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't build water blocks right now. I just kind of have this plane of water um, that I set at a, at a kind of a tiled interval here. So I'm actually just gonna uh, duplicate this and move it over X. So now we've got water in our world. So these are the mountains um, from earlier that were looking really jagged and out of place. And you can see when we stretch the world out, they look less so. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, the problem with just stretching the world is that uh, the oceans become massive. Um, and you could have an ocean that's a thousand blocks in every direction, which doesn't make for great gameplay. Um, but you can see now, like, we've got little uh, lakes that are popping up now, where we didn't have these before. So we've got another one over here. Oh, this is nice. I like this. Over here, it's getting a little sloppy. Still interesting to look at. I would say we've got a very pronounced river here, but 
then it, it sort of terminates, which is a little disappointing. Some more water features over here. I'm going to turn up the render size and I'm going to let it run for a minute and uh, see what it generates. So the rivers aren't as um, pronounced as I thought they would be after stretching the world. You can see this river's a little small. You couldn't get a boat through here. Um, I was hoping that stretching the world would, would really help, but it doesn't seem to have done much. So I might, um, increasing the river depth, it's a world generator setting that I have, um, and seeing if that improves the pronunciation of the rivers here. Let's see, we're at x2000. And z80. So we'll log back in where we left off. Stop the server, delete the world chunks, and so river depth is down here, so I'm just going to bump this up a bit and rebuild, and we'll see if that helps to define the rivers a little better. So here's that same river. It looks a lot better, in my opinion. Um, let's go ahead and turn it up a little higher. Delete my world. Stop the server.
rivers look a lot better, but um, you might notice that there's more of them <laughs> now. We'll go ahead and let the world generate in for a minute. See if we didn't overdo it here. Because like now there's this river which didn't exist before. But this one looks nice. Yeah, you can see how setting the river depth like this might have actually been overkill um, because while it did make our river more pronounced here, um, it also made a lot more of them, including this one over here, which is just barely visible. Um, let's go a little further inland. This is a nice river. It's another nice river. It goes deep too, right down into the cave systems. Let's see if I can get myself out of here. Oh, chunk error. turn up the render distance and just let it draw the world for a little bit. I'll be back while I grab a cup of coffee. You know, on second thought, I kind of like what it's done to the terrain. Might be overkill. Hmm. I'm going to let that finish generating in.
Okay, um, I think I'm going to move on from terrain generation. Um, I think this is probably overkill on rivers, um, but it looks really cool right now, so I'm going to leave it. Um, one of the problems that I have is that uh, terrain is very um, monotonous because I don't have biomes at the moment. I thought I did, but biomes aren't working, and that's something else to fix, but I think right now I'm going to move on to fixing another issue, which is missing textures. Let's see if I can find an example. Um, if I go down to the caves, it'll be really obvious. So, these blocks here that are white, if we actually look at it, um, let me focus in on the player here. Turn the the game doesn't perform really well when render size is cranked way up, so I'm gonna turn it down. Right, so focus in on our player and the chunk that he's in. If we select that chunk, um, and the sub chunk he's in. Um, so if we look under our mesh collider, you'll see that um, each subchunk has a mesh, and each mesh has um, a collection of materials. So in this subchunk mesh, there are three different types of blocks, stone, andesite, and block key. Now block key is the default um, texture that's assigned when the when there's an error looking up what the name of that texture is. So somewhere through the pipeline of building out textures, I've made a mistake and we've got um, textures that that aren't loading. And that's what those white, white ores are, these here. So I've got to figure out what I've done wrong here. Um, so I'll be debugging that now. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the game client to use the um, debugger um, instead of running the server um, separately. I'm just going to use the um, the what am I trying to say the um, debug server the debug IIS express server. Um, so if I start this solution, <clears throat> it'll actually start running on port uh, 55163, I think. Yeah, 55163. Um, so what this will allow me to do is I'll be able to hit breakpoints in the server code while the game client is running. Um, say I'm going to point the Unity solution to the server solution, basically, is what I'm doing here. Um, next, I'm going to go into the server and find where um, I assign the debug block texture when I don't know what I'm looking for. I think that's in here. So this is where our our null condition is um, failing us. So we're doing this check here on line 47 to say, give me the first texture um, that matches the block ID. So we'll put our breakpoint here. No, actually, actually, scratch that there's going to be a lot of times when that texture loads correctly, so I'm actually going to write an if statement. 
just so I can have a break point to hit here. Still not going to work. What's wrong? Try that again. If I can't hit this breakpoint, how am I going to debug? Let me think on this for a minute. So the way this block lookup works is um, it actually references a, an XML file. Let me see if I can find it. struggling to remember how I did this. Oh, yeah, I'm being stupid. This doesn't happen on the server, it happens on the client. Yeah. That's why I couldn't hit that breakpoint. Um, 
right, so. Sorry, I'm still working through why this doesn't work. Well, it seems I forgot iron. That must be the problem. I, I don't, I'm calling for iron, but I haven't defined it here in the XML. So that's a problem. Easy one to fix, though. While we're in here, let's see if I did diamonds. Nope, didn't do diamonds. Let's look at that next.
Alright, let's see if that fixed it. Maybe. server. Still getting null when I'm trying to look up materials. I think I didn't propagate this file correctly. Let's see, so crunch crap needs it. Let's just do a up to date. This one is wrong. This one is up to date. Yeah. Finally this one. That might do it there's any other ores I forgot. Alright, here goes. force our player into a cave real quick. Yeah, there's our ores. Stuck in a wall, but they're coming through. Glad I found that bug, that was driving me nuts for a while. Yep, here's our coal ore poking through. There's a possibility we might also see iron ore up here on the surface. 
There's some andesite. Over here, I should have some cave access under the water. Yeah. So here's some diamond and iron, coal, more iron. Totally stuck. Some more iron. Alright, awesome. Ores are fixed. Okay, I'm pretty happy about that. back up on the surface here. It's a very interesting swirl going on on our terrain. I'm going to try a couple of different locations around this map and see if I can get some other cool uh, terrain features. So I'm going to pop over to zero, zero, and see if we can get anything. All right, we got some ocean here. My oceans are really shallow. I need to work on that. Diamond up on the ocean level, yeah. So this is what I was talking about earlier. One of the disadvantages of stretching the world is that you also stretch the oceans. So could be a lot of ocean here. Let's try and get 500. See if we can get some land. Looks like more ocean. Let's go up 500. More ocean. Um. Keep going um, west. See what we can get. Got something here. Oh, sorry about my kids. smidge of land over there. Let's go check it out. Uh, the closer you get to the edge of the world, the faster it'll make those chunks generate in. This is like a series of islands, which makes me wonder if I've got the water level too high. I don't know, I kind of like it. It's neat. There's a small island here, probably. on mute here while I let this world generate in.
Cool. I like the strain. It's very interesting. Although it might probably could stand to have the rivers turned down maybe a bit. I think more there'd be more grass filled in here if the river value wasn't set so high. It's a delicate balance. I'm going to try doing that. So I'm at negative 1200, 700. So I can remember to get back here. go and stop our server um, delete the world we just generated and change the uh, generator to make the rivers less deep all right rebuild and fire it back up Take a minute for the world to load in. Now, just because I'm curious, I'm going to turn up the mountain's um, frequency and see what it would do to this uh, particular area of this particular seed.
so this is what the mountain sets 0.55. Let's see if this area of the world gets chosen for mountain generation. No mountains. This is kind of interesting. So it's um, noon here, and uh, one of the things that I told myself I was going to do today is to um, work on the concept of a world, because right now it's just kind of hard-coded. Um, add an endpoint to the server for uh, worlds, and when somebody requests a new world, pre-generate chunks. Um, do some logic to figure out, you know, to mark a spawn chunk, which is preferably not one that's an ocean. Um, and then, probably not going to happen today, but create a GUI in the game client um, to create a new world and pre-generate chunks, set the seed, uh, that sort of stuff. So, um, I already got a little bit of a head start on it. Um, got, let's see, uh, I've went into the code already and added, uh, go ahead and go away, into my chunk model, where's my chunk model? for a world, but I guess I didn't save it. Ah, no worries, I can do it today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and work on the concept of a world now. So I'm going to go ahead and, as much as I want to keep this up and running, uh, just shut it down and get to work. So it told me I couldn't create a folder named world, and I'm guessing that's because it already exists, and for some reason my solution didn't save. So yeah, here's my world folder. So I'll just back this up. Um, then I'll add a new folder. Something 
broke with my solution. I don't know what it was. Um, I don't know. It's okay. I, I don't think I did too much work in here. Just uh, copy this. fix this. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Whatever that weirdness was, it's over. Um, so we're just going to make a model for our world. Um, we want to be able to serialize it since it's going to transact between the server and the client, possibly over the internet. We're just going to define a couple of properties. Um, the obvious ones are like the seed. Um, I want to have the world save a single chunk to be the spawn chunk. Um, so we'll do some work later to identify of the chunks that were initially generated, which one is not just ocean. So that way the player has a good chance of spawning on land. Now, I would normally save the location of the chunk as a vector 2. Um, and I can serialize vector 2s. I've written a surrogate for vector 2 serialization, but I try to avoid um, using referencing Unity objects in classes that I serialize as much as I can. So I'm going to do that in this case, and instead of creating a vector 2, I'm just going to save the chunks x and y coordinates separately. Um, so this will be a spawn chunk x. Get set. So over to our server, um, I've already created a kind of a uh, boilerplate API endpoint for the uh, world controller. Um, so this will be at um, slash API slash world on our server. Um, <clears throat> so we want to have a post, so we'll use this here so that um, people can request a new world. Um, so we'll take in a um, string for the name. Uh, here. We'll need a uh, string for the seed. And I think that's all we'll need. Um, so let's create, so my train of thought right now is, um, if somebody posts 
to create a new world and that world already exists, um, then we want to reject that request. Um, so that, that logic to check to see if a world already exists is basically just going to be check to see if a folder with that world's name exists, and um, that's how we'll know. So if I look at my chunk controller, I'm already doing some logic like that. Um, so first we'll build out the path of that folder, um, which right now we're just storing all the world folders at the same directory as the server is running in. So like if I go look in here, my Minecrunch server, you can see earlier we were playing in world one. Well, that folder is here at the root of that solution. And even here when we were running it locally, you know, without Visual Studio, world one was right there. Um, so to check for that, we just need to do um, if file name, can I say directory? How do I check if a folder exists in C sharp? Basically, this will stop someone from creating a new world over an existing one. Or potentially changing the seed or something else. Um, so if not, we need to do a couple of things. So we need to create the world folder. We need to pre-generate some chunks. And what else do we need to do? Choose a spawn chunk. Uh, so we'll start with the first one. Um, let me think here. I'm just going to borrow this code. To create our model, so create an instance of our model. So we'll say our world is equal to a new world. And so I guess that's a step I forgot. Create our model. to seed. Um, I'm going to take a real quick break.
back. Um, so when I do world generation, um, I've been hard coding the seed just in the file. Um, so if I look at my generator, world generator settings, like every time I wanted to change seed, I would just come down here and change it. Um, so we'll have to change that now because we want to specify the seed. Where am I using this? Hmm. I use it when I create my Perla noise. So I have to go all the way down into here to update that. Let me think on this. How am I going to do that? Hmm. So this Perlin noise class is a singleton. Why did I make it a singleton? That was a bad idea. <laughs> um, yeah, if it's a singleton, then I can't ever have more than one world generated by the server, but is that okay? A server, one world per server? Yeah, I think that's okay. I'll just have to... I'll have to create a method that sets the um, world, world generator settings. So I'm just going to make this a public, does it need to be static? Hmm. to this. But if I change that, I'll need to create a new world generator. Yeah, so let's not do a property. Let's go old school and just create a method to change the world generator. Um, I need to make this world gen live uh, be property of the instance. Yeah, it already is. It's private. Okay, that's fine. So we'll say that. should update the private reference to the world gen which is used everywhere else so let's actually move this out oh this is in the constructor 
so when it's constructed, it'll be constructed with the default world generator settings. And then you can come back later and change the world generator settings with this method. And it will create a new world gen um, with the updated settings. Okay, and um, let's see here. So that work is actually done in our threaded task for generating the train. So the train is actually the one that has a reference to the Perlin noise class. Um, uh, since Perlin noise is a singleton, we can actually set the Perlin noise generator settings in the server API advantage of singletons. Um, so let's go ahead and pop into our API here and we'll set up, so we'll need to create a new So um, the way that seeds actually work, I don't know um, how many people follow how Minecraft does things, but like in Minecraft you can set the seed to anything you want, you can set it to a sentence. And the way that that sentence gets transformed into like an integer that the, um, you know, the noise function can use is it, it just gets the hash code. Um, so we're going to do the same thing, basically. Just you give me a string for the seed for whatever you want, and I'll turn it into an integer and feed it into the world generator. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got our generator settings. We need to get the singleton for the Perlin noise instance. Um, so I don't even know if I need it, so I'll just say settings with settings. So now we've set up our um, our noise class with the seed that was passed in from our world creation endpoint on our server. <clears throat> I'll just I'll put these in better order. Later, we're going to serialize this model that we've created. Um, serialize world. same way that the chunk controller generates chunks, new chunk generated. We need to go and pre-generate a bunch of these. Um, and then enqueue it in our task runner. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say uh, our chunk is equal Chunk name, I don't know the chunk name. I'm just going 
do some copy pasta here. should set our file path. I assume we need that for the... Why do we need the file path? Oh, we don't need it for the chunk generation. Okay, uh, next we can set our x equals to x and y is equal to y. Uh, biome is equal to biome.desert. I'll do this later. I haven't done biomes yet. Not properly, anyway. Not working, I should say. All right, next we need to create an instance of our task runner. So we'll just borrow that from here. Okay, um, we got our Task runner instance. So now we should be able to queue this chunk job. What am I missing? Ah, terrain tasks. Queue new chunk generate terrain task. So now, um, when somebody requests a new world on the server, um, we'll check to see if the directory exists, which is another way of saying, does this world exist? If it doesn't, um, then we'll go ahead and create our new world model, which we'll use later to serialize. Um, we'll create a new world generator that's using that seed, the seed that was passed in to us. And then we get our Perlin noise or our noise generator singleton and we set it with that new seed. Oops. Um, we create a folder for our new world and then we will pre-generate chunks. So we'll go from uh, x negative 10 to x, well, positive 9. I guess I could make that equal. And then same thing for y negative 10 through y positive 10 and we'll start pre-generating the spawn chunks. Um, so to do that we're going to create a new uh, chunk model. We're going to fill in the name, the x and y coordinates, the biome. I'll do this later because I'm still not sold on how I want to do that. Um, and then we will uh, get, this is a reference to our task runner singleton um, and we'll enqueue a new generate terrain task so we're basically sending 100 uh, tasks to generate chunks off to this. And so that will start to happen in the background. Um, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm just checking chat. OK. Um, oh, Justin's here. Hi, Justin. Yes, I like my job. Uh, let's see. So 
So actually, let's stop there and see if this works. Um, just for for those of you that are just joining the stream, um, we're basically creating Minecraft here from scratch. Because why not? Um, I'm just going to switch this around. So at this point, I've already got a server here that can generate chunks, and I've got a game client here which can draw those chunks. Here's our world is coming in. problem is that right now, um, like the seed, uh, the world name and all that are just kind of hard-coded. Um, and every time I want to change the seed, I have to rebuild the DLL. <laughs> so um, that's what we're working on right now, is we're adding an endpoint to the server to say, hey, I want to generate a new world. Here's the seed. Here's the name of the world. Okay, um, I'm just going to stop that. I'm going to pop back over to our server here, and I'm going to try to um, try to hit this code. Um, let's see. I need a API utility. I think Firefox can do it. Get Postman. Is Postman not free anymore? than that. How big is this thing? So what I'm going to do with Postman is I'm going to put a post into um, slash API slash world and I'm going to pass in two parameters name and string and I'm going to test this code and if it works like I hope it will um, what it should do is create a new folder in this directory and start um, filling in chunks. Oh, I should probably create the chunk folder now that I'm thinking about it, actually. Um, go away. Let's see, chunk. create this folder. I actually need to create the chunks folder too. So just hack it in real quick. Alright, that should be fine. Uh, do we have Postman yet? Do we really have to have an account? Postman, what happened to you? You used to be free and easy. <sighs> this crap. Yeah, I can't be bothered. Is there an alternative?
know if anybody has any recommendations on an alternative to Postman. Let me know. It used to be free and easy. I don't know. Disappointed. Hundred fifty seven megabytes. What the hell? For fuck's sake. Alright, never mind. I'm just gonna use Firefox because Jesus. Um Okay, so let's start our server. first, which shouldn't really do anything. But what we can do is on our network tab here, I believe we can edit this. We'll make it a post and we'll say um, name equals Yay, we got a, it exploded, hooray. <clears throat> All right, we got a, whoa, what do we got here? Seed was null. Hmm. Try that again. Seed is null, name is null. Gotta do it like that. Okay. So go ahead and break out of here. Go back to Firefox. Edit resend. So name is equal to world two. step through this code. So we should create our new world model. That looks good. Um, create new world generator settings. Our seed should be set to a hash of the word hi. That looks good. Um, set our Perlin noise world generator settings. That looks good. So here we should create a world2 folder in here. Let's see if that happens. There it is. And now we'll start generating some chunks. So I'm just going to hit continue from here. And we'll pop in here and see if we see chunks start to pop in. Looks like our CPU is doing something. So hopefully we'll start to see some chunks. Put in an order for a hundred chunks, so that could take a while. Come on, show me some chunks. No, 
must have done something wrong. Hmm. Hmm, why didn't that work? see if we can figure out what went wrong there. So we're getting all the way down here to generate some chunks. Our chunk is called negative 10, negative 10. Create a new chunk object. Looks good. Make some wire set to negative 10. Um, we'll enqueue it into our terrain tasks. So let's look at our task runner. Put a breakpoint in here. Um, update queues. All right, so we've got one terrain task. Um, here it has negative ten, negative ten all over it. The joys of threading. Okay, so let's stick to this thread. 203040. Actually, let me do it right here. Conditions. Ah. Oh, I don't remember how to do this. How do you filter a breakpoint to a thread? There we go. Thread ID is equal to 203040. Saved. Right. So here's our task. It is not done. So, thread complete. Uh, we've got a callback here for handle terrain generation complete. So, I'm going to put a breakpoint on here, set its condition to. Will that be a different thread? That might be a different thread, actually. So, we'll just continue on. We're in queuing up a bunch of new chunks. We hit our callback here, our um, event. We've got our object. Um, looks like our surface map has been filled in. So it's definitely worked. Um, I'm just going to add a couple more breakpoints here. Debugging multi-threaded tasks is a heck of a job. <laughs> oh, here's the problem. Look what I hard-coded. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so the new chunks that I've been generating, I'm saving to the World 1 folder. That's why I didn't see anything. Okay, that makes sense. Alright, i got to figure out how to... Okay. How am I going to fix that? Hmm. Um, 
Let's see, our task runner also needs to know where the world is, or should figure it out anyway. Hmm. Do I save it with the chunk? Should the chunk know what world it belongs to? That's the question. Hmm. Maybe the train generation tasks knows what world it belongs to. what I'll do. So I'm just going to add a uh, public string world name. Actually, it should be lowercase. And I'm um, going to force you to pass it in. So this will be read only. Pass it in when you create the task. Um, break our APIs pretty well. Let's go fix those controllers. <clears throat> so here we have the new chunk generate train task and we need to pass in the world name. I think it's just name in this context. Yeah, just name. And in our chunk controller, this should be broken um, because we need to pass in world. That should fix it. Okay. Go ahead and delete these folders. Uh, run our server. Open back up Firefox and resend these. Um, world 2. Send. I'm just going to let this run and assume that it all worked. So if we go into World 2 chunks now, hopefully we'll start seeing some chunks pop in. Hopefully. <laughs> Please. Nope. Hmm. Does this process only run when it's in the foreground? Runner at oh, <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. Whoops, <clears throat> see, handle face count complete. out of here. Task 
scrap thread eight. Thread complete chunk. Here we go. So this is where I call that callback. And I'm only passing the chunk, but I need to pass more than just a chunk. I need to pass the whole model. So that will break this here, because now I'm trying to cast that object to a chunk, but it's not a chunk. It's now a world generator. Halfway, only did half the work. Task stop. World man. So now I need to go in here and update this. Public string world name. in the constructor. Request the world name. receiving a chunk object, we are receiving a chunk calculate faces task. Just assume it works this time. Let's put a breakpoint right here. <laughs> All right. Let's resend this. Hit our breakpoint. Good, good, good. We should hit this at some point. There it is. these callbacks all in a row. So task.chunk, sure. Task.world name, world2. Awesome. So that should actually save it to the correct place. Let's verify. Chunks are here. 441 items. Is that how many I created? Seems like a lot. All right. Cool. Generating all our chunks. One item off the list. Hello, classic gamer. Please stop spamming. Okay, so I'm pretty happy about that. So now the game client could actually um, do a post to say, um, I want world 2, here is the seed for world 2. The server will pre-generate a bunch of chunks, and then the client could start requesting those chunks as they come in. Hmm. I guess we'll go to um, the game client code and actually 
actually try it, I guess. Um, let me stop this server running. Stop this running. And, um... Let's see here. So I'm gonna clean up the worlds that we've been generating. So I'll get rid of these. And I'll get rid of this. All right, um, so what I'm gonna do to test instead of going and writing a bunch of client code, because that's boring, is, um, let me make sure this is up to date, it is. So I'm gonna run this copy of the server, which kind of stand alone outside of Visual Studio. I'm going to point the game at that server, it currently is, and then I'm going to use Firefox to, um, do an edit and resend here. I'm going to use Firefox to ask it to pre generate a bunch of chunks for World 1. And I'm going to say that the seed is. I don't know. So let's go ahead and send that off to the server. Um, the server will have received that request, I hope. Said it gave us a 200 on our post, so hopefully it's out there generating a bunch of chunks. We can go check. Yeah, here's all these chunks. They just got generated. So now we can fire our game up, which is pointed at that server. And the chunks should load in pretty quick since they're all pre-generated. Yes, they did indeed. All right, awesome. We're in the ocean, which kind of sucks, but... at least try to get topside here. Yeah, so these all kind of preloaded in. And if we look at our server, not seeing much here. See if we can find some land. Um, let's take our player and move him to zero, zero. Hopefully. No, it's not going to work. Something's wrong. Looks like I paused the server. I don't know how I did that. Bad things are happening. The My computer. No doubt that. Okay, so I screwed up one thing. Um, I pre-generated a lot of chunks around zero, zero. Um, and then I spawned my player in on the other side of the world. <laughs> um, nowhere near the spawn chunks, so that was bad. Um, so I'm gonna fix that real quick and we'll try that exercise again. So now my player is at zero, zero. I'm going to delete this world, um, 
fire up the server running go ahead and request a new world there we go it received our request for a new world and we should see it generating chunks yep it's pre-generating all of these chunks for us so that when our client goes to connect we should see it just load in chunks real fast yeah that's better Yep, yeah, we're in an ocean again. The tyranny of the oceans. <clears throat> um, let me go ahead and see if I can generate a new place that's not ocean. Hopefully there's somewhere around here that's not ocean. Wow, this seed is really awful. It's like 100% ocean. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh. All right. oh, you know what? The client. Oh, no. That's not how it works. I was trying to remember how the seed worked. Um, yeah. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is to serialize the world and then load it when the server starts. Um, where am I? Not this one, but this one. So here in our chunk controller, we, uh, our world controller, I mean, um, we pre-generate a lot of chunks. Um, at some point, we need to go through all those chunks and choose a spawn chunk, which I might actually have the chunks do themselves, have themselves check to see if I'm a suitable spawn chunk or not. And then we'll just iterate over all the chunks and choose the one we like the most. Um, but what I need to do next is serialize the world and save it to disk. And by saving it to disk, I can then, once the application starts back up, I can recreate the world generator with the correct seed and stuff like that. Because right now, if I were to shut down the server and then start it back up again, it wouldn't know what the seed was, and it would use the default seed. Um, I'm going to take a break from that, and then when I come back, I'll work on that. But yeah, I'm at two and a half hours of streaming right now, so it's a good time for a break, I think. I'll be back in probably half an hour. I'll stop the stream now.